Last lesson, we add the ability for our system to properly process POST commands in addition to the existing ability to handle GET requests. In this lesson, we're going to add the rest of the common HTTP verbs, including PUT, PATCH, and DELETE. This will round out the functionality we've been working on in this application. Now, this is lesson number eight in our complete course on building a Postman clone. This course has been designed to be beginner-friendly and example of what you might put in a portfolio. Although, don't just directly put this course in your portfolio. Your portfolio needs to be uniquely yours, not just a copy of someone else's work. If you want to go further in C-sharp, I would encourage you to go to imtimcorey.com and check out the Dev Pass. Once you get the Dev Pass, I'd recommend starting with a master course to get job ready and then fill in your gaps with one or more of the dozens of topic specific courses included. The Dev Pass will get you up to speed and keep you up to date in your software development career. So let's look at our code. Here is the, the app. And if we just run this real quick, we won't actually make it do anything, but the drop down here is just get and post. We're going to add the other abilities in here in this in this lesson. So let's first close this out and address the drop down. So we'll go to properties and in properties, you have items, we'll have collection, we have get post, we'll put put, patch, and delete. Those are the other three verbs we'll address today. So I have five verbs total in our drop down, but don't forget, it's not just here, we're matching this up to an enum which the enum needs to have put, patch, and delete. Okay, so now we have our enum matches as well because that's what's gonna get passed in to our, our API access. So if we look at the source code just to see it because we shouldn't need to change anything here. And what we've got here is we check to make sure that it's a valid URL then we say, hey, let's parse our dropdown value, the selected item to string as an action, which is an HTTP action, which is that enum HTTP action, get, post, put, patch, and delete. That's where the two have to match up exactly. So as long as it matches, then we call asynchronously the call API. So call API asynchronously, pass in the text, the API text, which is the URL, the body text, which is the uh, the content we're sending, and then pass the action. So with that, let's go ahead and go over to this call API async. So we can close out of our code here. We can close out of our enum and go back to our solution explorer and go to API access. And we have here our call API async. So in here, we have the um, the action, which you have get and post. So now what we need to do is handle the other types of calls. So let's just copy and paste. We'll do one at a time and we'll say put. So this should be put async and I paste again. And I'm gonna say patch and we'll say here, this is patch async. And then we'll paste one more time. It's going to be delete. This is going to be delete async, but it does not have any content. It just has a URL. So again, a little bit different, kind of like get, we just have the, the delete is just a delete. So with that, we've now wired up the ability to make these calls. Let's verify that this actually works. And this is this sounds really simple right now. I mean, we're only four minutes into the video. We already have the code written. Well, let's verify that it actually works first before we talk about kind of next steps and if it we need to make any changes. So let's get the, um, let's make sure first a, a get works. And I believe I have copied in here. That's the command for a post, um, for getting the posts, it's just posts. Um, so let's hit go on this and yes, it returns the proper get command. So now we know it's working. Let's do slash one and we're going to do a put. So a put is going to update a record. 
So we're going to say, we're going to update record ID, and we'll say that this ID number is, is one, since notice also in here we have slash one, that's the ID we're going to update. So that should match this ID. And then we're going to say title is going to be, um, this is our test title. And then we're going to have body. And we're going to say this is our um, testing body. Now, we also have to have user ID, sorry. User ID, and the user ID we'll say is uh, three. Now, with a, a put, what we're doing is we are updating a complete record. So we're saying here's a complete new record or complete update to everything about this record. So let's hit go. And notice the results mirror what we said they would be. Okay, so you know, ID, title, everything matches what we passed in. Now let's do the same thing, only let's do a patch. Now a patch, again, okay, same URL, but a patch, what we do is we don't pass a whole record in, we just pass the changes in. So let's just pass in just the, let's copy this first, if I haven't already. Um, let's pass in just the title. All right, and then we hit go. And notice it says user ID is one, ID is one, and title is, this is our test title, but the body is this placeholder text because with our patch, we said just update the title, that's it, for ID number one. So if I said ID number four and hit go, well, ID number four has now been updated with, this is the, you know, by it's already there, but this is our test title, which is the update. If I want to come back over here, I could say body as well and say test body. And if we hit go again, notice now the body has been updated. But if I take that, maybe the title off and hit go, well, the title is that sample text because I didn't update that, I just updated the body. So there we go. Now we have patch in place. That just leaves delete. So let's go over to delete. And with delete, we can pass in nothing. We don't have to pass anything in. And if we did, we're gonna ignore it. So it doesn't matter if we do or not, but passing in just the idea of right now four, hit go, notice the empty brackets, which just indicates it worked, but it didn't actually return any values because it just, it, it completed successfully. So, uh, you know, it completed successfully. It's all we need to know. Therefore, um, we have an empty brackets meaning nothing got returned. Okay, so in this case, with a delete, a 200 or success message is all you need. You just need to know that yes, it was successful in deleting that record. So that's all it took to implement those other three verbs, put, patch, and delete. We just had to update the dropdown, we had to update the enum, and we had to update this switch statement with which action to take and what to do with that action. The success state is the same, although it could be that we say, you know what, let's come down here and if it is a delete action, then we just, we don't actually, you know, serialize a an output. We just say, you know, delete is, is done and that'd be it. Okay, so that's that's a possibility if you want to do that. But I think that's all we need to do in order to complete our application. Okay, now at this point, this application is pretty much done with all the basic works work of an API tester. Okay, we've got all five standard verbs. We have the ability to pass a URL in and the ability to pass in information in the body in the form of JSON. It doesn't yet handle sending or receiving XML. So we're doing JSON, but APIs can do XML instead. Um, it doesn't work with authentication yet and doesn't allow for custom headers. But that's all work we can do in the future. For now, we're going to conclude this series, okay? So eight lessons in, we have a complete application we could show off in our portfolio that would be what I would recommend building something like, not exactly this, but something like this to show off so that you say, hey, this is what I can do. Now, 
Uh, we may come back to this series together in the future to add more functionality, but my challenge to you would be a continue building this application. Add the additional functionality I just mentioned, plus add a web user interface. Take the time to build it out as a full application. Test your skills. You don't need to have me show you all on the way. You can do this. Take the next step and practice your skills. Some of you have been following along in other UIs. That's awesome. You know, test it out in, you know, WinUI 3 or WPF or Blazor Web App or, you know, whatever UI you want to try out, go for it. Build it out and see what you can do to make this your own. And then again, show that off in your portfolio. Just don't copy directly what I did because it's actually going to be a detriment to your portfolio if you do. Because if an employer starts to see that you've copied code from someone else, then everything turns into a question mark about your portfolio. Okay, so that's what my challenge to you. Um, like I said at the beginning of the series, the source code's not avail available to you directly because I want you to try this out on your own. I want you to do it on your own, not just watch. I want you to actually learn and grow from this. Um, I will in the future, not right away, but in the future, I will put this on in the dev pass as a, a course you can, you can get and take with the source code. Um, to try it out and practice. But for now, we're gonna leave it out. We're gonna wait a little bit and I may in the future put more lessons to it. I'm not sure if I'll put it on YouTube or not, but um, I would love to keep, you know, kind of tinkering with this. This is what I love to do is, is build a test app and kind of tinker with it, try it out, try different things. This is how you get good at software development is just try it, just build stuff and then keep coming back and iterating and making it better and, and making better things out of it. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for participating in this series. And as always, I am Tim Corey.